Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, I'm going to talk to you about 10 new features in Lightroom. Now, these aren't the most exciting features, they're not the flashiest features, and they're not the features that get all of the attention, but they're really important features, and if you use them in your workflow, they're going to help you become more efficient. So, the first thing that I want to show you is you might be looking at a folder full of images and you simply want to display them full screen. This actually was a little bit more difficult in previous versions of Lightroom, but now I can just tap the F key and we go full screen. Now I can move to my next image or the previous image just using my arrow keys. So it's a really great way to quickly display your images. I'm going to go ahead and tap the F key again to get out of that, and I just want to show you if you're used to the legacy behavior, now all you need to do is you need to add the Shift key. So if I do Shift F, you can see I come out of full screen mode. And this is actually a toggle, so Shift F again goes to full screen with the menu bar, and Shift F again goes to full screen hiding that menu bar up at the top. Just remember if you're used to using F to toggle through those three views, now you want to add the Shift key to it. All right. If I'm in loop view like I am right now, we now have the ability to show not only grids but also guides. And we can do that with a keyboard shortcut or I can go here underneath the view menu, come down to my loop overlay, and then choose to show either grids or guides. I'll go ahead and choose to show both of them. We can see that the keyboard shortcut right here is going to be Command Option O or Control Alt O on Windows. So I'll choose Guides. There are the guides. Let's go back under there and set it up so that I'm also looking at my grid. So we'll go ahead and select that. And while I've got the guides and the grids visible, you'll notice that if I hold down the Command key on the Mac or the Control key on Windows, I can reposition not only the guides, but I can also change the opacity of the guides, and I can change the size of the grid as well. Again, to turn that off, it would just be Option, Command, and then O, or Control, Alt, O on Windows. Another area that we've added features to is the Smart Collection. So if I click here on the plus icon and we choose to create a Smart Collection, you can see that not only are they grouped differently, but we also have some new options. So for example, down here underneath Size, you can see all of the new ways that we can create a Smart Collection based on different sizes of our images. In addition, and I don't need to point them all out here, but you now have the criteria to create a smart collection on bit depth, or the number of color channels, the color mode, the color profile, and the smart preview status, as well as a file type, in this case PNG, because PNG is now supported in Lightroom. And just as a side note, both the smart preview status and the PNG, those are available not only under the smart collection, but they're also available available if I go to the grid view under here underneath the metadata area. All right, three more shortcuts that you should know about with collections. If you are in a collection and then you move out of it and you return back to it, you should know that the last selected image will remain selected in that collection. In addition, when you create a collection, and I'll just choose to create a collection here, we have a new option to set as a target collection, which is fabulous because we all know that if you have a target collection, then you can use the keyboard shortcut B, as in boy, in order to add an image to that collection so that you don't have to sit there in the grid view and drag and drop the image into the collection. All right, excellent. As I mentioned, uh, we have support for PNG. So here I have a PNG file right here. And in fact, the Edit in Photoshop workflow is supported. So if I decide to go to Edit in, and then I'll edit this in Photoshop CC, if I edit the original, when that file is opened up in Photoshop, you can see that anything that was transparent in the PNG in Lightroom remains transparent in Photoshop. 
All right, let's go back to Lightroom. I'll select this image and we'll go over to the develop module. One of the most requested features was the ability to see the current state of the image and the proof state of the image when using soft proofing. So let's just tap the S key in order to enable soft proofing. And now I'll tap the Y key or we could click on the icon down here to see what typically is before and after. But now we can see that we're looking at the current image and then a proof preview right next to it. And of course we can change this so if we wanted to maybe split the screen we can see it a little bit better and a little bit larger here. All right, let's tap the S key to turn that off and I'll tap the Y key to get out of the before and after. And now I'm gonna tap the R key. The R key of course is going to take me to my crop tool because I wanna show you the next new feature. It's underneath the crop guide overlay. You'll notice right down here at the bottom, we can choose our aspect ratios. So we can toggle on as few or as many of these different aspect ratios that we simply want to preview. Again, we're not actually cropping to this aspect ratio, it's just gonna show us an overlay. So when I click OK, we can see now these different aspect ratios. Now, typically when you tap the O key, you actually cycle through the different overlays. But there are a lot of different overlays, so another new feature is the ability to come here to to the crop guide overlay and actually tell it which overlays to cycle through when using the O key. So if we select that, you'll notice that I've just got a few of them turned off. I typically use either a grid, the rule of thirds, or this aspect ratios. So again, just tapping the O key, there's my rule of thirds, and then we go back to the aspect ratios for cropping. So again, it's not actually cropping the image, it's just going to show me a preview of those aspect ratios if I did need to crop this image, say, for two different reasons, maybe two different layouts, I would now have a good estimate as to what the finished image would look like. Another new feature that is requested all the time is the ability to actually lock the zoom position so that when you move from one image to the next and you have zoomed in, this feature right here under the view menu will actually allow you to lock that position. And in fact, if we return back to loop view by tapping the E key, so now I'm back in the library, you'll notice that underneath the view menu right here, we have that same option. So it's accessible in the develop module as well as in the library module. There's an additional new feature. This happens to be a preference. So I will go into the Lightroom menu, come down to Preferences. Of course, if you are on Windows, you would go into the Edit menu to your Preferences. And then I'm going to look in the General area. You'll notice right down here, we have the option to enable or disable the ability to select the current or the previous import collection during import. So what does that mean? In previous versions of Lightroom, this was always on. So when you imported new files, Lightroom always put the focus on the imported files up here. Now you can toggle that off, so as you're importing your files, the focus can stay on whatever folder you had selected before you went in to import your files. And finally, if we take a collection of images, I've got some right here. Let's go ahead and head over to the slideshow module. If we show our film strip, you can see here that I've actually got some video files as well as some still images. And I can include both of these now in my slideshow. So if we click on the playback panel, you can see right down here, we have the option for audio. If we select an audio track, we then have the ability to change the audio balance towards the video or towards the music. So if you have people talking and you want the music soundtrack to fade out so that you can hear the people talking in your video, then we'll scoot the audio balance down towards video. If you're like me though and you weren't trying to record the audio and it sounds really bad, you might want to scoot up the audio balance here over here towards music. But sure enough now, if I click on preview, we can go ahead and preview not only our still images, but also our videos in a single slideshow. Excellent, there you have it. At least 10 additional features that can really help your productivity in Lightroom. My name's Julianne Cost. thanks for watching.